Hi everyone, today I'm going to take you behind the scenes to show you exactly how I make our DIY wigs for our candles. It's a game changer for every candle lover and I promise you once you learn this you'll never go back. Plus I'll be using some special tools and materials that you can actually find on our website. So if you're interested in making the wigs just like I do, head over there after the video and get what you need. Let's get started. First things first, let's talk materials. For our DIY wigs, we need something that burns slowly and steadily. I've experimented with a lot of materials and I've found that 100% cotton wigs works wonders. But here's a pro tip, avoid any wig that is being treated with chemicals or has been bleached. We're all about keeping it natural and safe. Today I've got not one but two methods to share. Whether you're looking for a straightforward approach or a little more specialized approach, I've got you covered. Let's kick things off with our straightforward approach which is suitable both for new candle makers and experienced candle makers alike. This humble cotton wick is about to become the soul of your candle. Today we are first going to start with the basic method which is simply cut and use. This method is as straightforward as it sounds and it is specially suited for people who appreciate simplicity and efficiency. Let's get started. First we begin with measuring out our thread that we need to make our wick. You can simply measure out a few extra centimeters from your container, from your decorative mold that you want. This is simply to support the top of the wick. Once we've measured out the amount of thread we require, we'll simply cut out the remaining and keep it aside for, pre, uh, for future use. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to introduce wick tabs. Wick tabs are something that hold the wick on the bottom and keep it firm. So we're going to use these wig tabs and uh, to make sure that the wig tab is securely attached to our wig thread, I'm going to use an appliance or you know I'm going to use a tool which is called a plier. You can easily find this at your local hardware store. So I'm going to use this plier so that I can adhere the wig tab to the wig. All I need to do now is to start the process. So to begin with what we're going to do is we're going to push through the thread inside of the wig tab. Once it is inside of the wig tab just leave a little thread on the bottom and then you need to press the top of the wig tab with the plier. What this will do is it will fix the thread to the wig tab and then you can see that your wick is ready. It is a very simple and easy process and it's a very clean process as well because you know for yourself that there are no chemicals inside of the wick. It's a completely natural 100% cotton wick. So this is the simple cut and use method. Now what you can do is the bottom, the extra bottom of the wick tab, we can simply go ahead and cut it and your wick is ready to use. The next step here is you can add some, you can dip this into wax and then use it. I prefer to use it as is because you know it's like the most cleanest way to use it. However, if you like you can do that as well. I'm just going to demonstrate that method as well just as a bonus step so that you know what I'm talking about. Now I have some liquid soy wax here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply dip the wick into the soy wax and I'm going to take it out. Now with the help of a tissue paper I'm just going to remove the extra wax that is stuck to the wick and I'm going to let it dry. As soon as it dries it will take only a few minutes to dry and as soon as it dries it is ready to use. So this is your simple cut and use wick. Like I said, the infusion of wick into the soy wax is a completely, you know, it's a completely optional and a bonus step. You can use it if you want to, otherwise you can discard it. So that is the first step. Now let us move on 
to a more specialized and a more professional approach into making the wicks our second type of wick will be soaked in a salt solution this isn't just for show soaking in a salt solution helps make sure that the wick produces lesser soot and it also helps in improving the burn quality of your candles to do this what we're going to do is i'm going to take a bowl of water and i'm going to add some salt to it and we're going to mix it until the salt dissolves completely well i only had uh, himalayan salt and i'm going to use that but the basic table salt also works well so you don't really have to get any specialized uh, salt for this process it's a very you know diy way and i want you all to keep it that way itself and uh, yeah so now we're going to add the wicks into the salt solution and we're going to let it soak for some time once it is completely soaked and completely infused in the salt water we're going to take it out and we're going to let it dry completely i'm just going to use a small towel you can use whatever you have and uh, just let it dry patience is the key here as you see it's a really small step but it makes a huge difference in improving the quality of your candles while these soak let's talk about customization making your own candle wicks really help us to tailor our uh, wicks to our specific projects something that we cannot do with the store bought wicks and hence this was you know my first reason to try out and make my own candle wicks because sometimes i'd have like large pillar candles and sometimes i'd have smaller jar candles and I was just wasting a lot of materials in terms of you know the leftovers as well and hence I wanted to have a very sustainable way of creating only so much that I want to use and preserve the rest and that is how you know the idea of customization came into picture but I really like this approach because it really helps me take that extra step add that personal touch as per the kind of projects that i am doing and uh, it's just really nice because you're we are able to control everything that goes into making our candle you know the outcome itself er, in, the outcome itself comes so nice that you know you're on the right path patience is the key here if you are going ahead with the salt soaked variant allowing the wick to completely dry is extremely crucial sometimes it might take up to 24 hours but it is well worth the wait for that perfect burn and i've got a challenge for you try both types of wicks and see which one you prefer and share your results with me your inputs could inspire a completely new video where we could test these wicks side by side wherein we are diving into the science of what makes that perfect burn would you like to see that let me know in the comments because i know i was going to film this i had pre soaked some wicks in the salt water solution and i just wanted to show you all the outcome so here are the wicks with the salt water solution as you can see they look really stiff and firm and these are the ones that are without the salt water solution and they look really soft and really nimble so that's the first you know visual difference and the difference in feel as well upon your comments we're going to see how we can uh, test out and experience the burn quality difference as well If you've enjoyed DIY wick making and if you found this video helpful please give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for more such candle making content I'll see you in the next video bye bye